What is DHCP, Domain Host Configuration Protocol Server? A DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol Server, is a network server that automatically assigns IP addresses and other crucial network configuration data to devices or clients on a local network. The purpose of DHCP is to simplify network management by allowing devices to receive IP addresses and other required network information without needing manual configuration for each device. So why we need DHCP? Without DHCP, each device on a network would need a manually assigned IP addresses, subnet masks, default gateway and DNS information. This would be complicated, prone to errors and difficult to manage, especially in networks with many devices or where devices frequently connect or disconnect, where DHCP streamlines this process by automating it, making network configuration both easier and more reliable. And here is what data is being assigned by DHCP. The DHCP server assigns several key pieces of information to devices, IP address, a unique identifier for the device within the local network, subnet mask, defines the range of IP addresses within the network, default gateway, the IP address that allows communication outside the local network usually is the router, and DNS domain name system servers IP addresses for DNS servers which resolve domain names to IP addresses for internet browsing, and lease time, the duration for which the IP address is assigned to the device. This configuration data is leased to a network device or a client for a specified period. When the lease expires, the IP address can be reassigned to another device if the original device is no longer connected. How DHCP works step by step DHCP discovery. When a new device, e.g. a laptop or smartphone, connects to the network, it sends out a DHCP discover message as a broadcast to locate any DHCP servers. This message is broadcasted on the network because the device doesn't yet have an IP address. DHCP offer is next step. When the DHCP server receives the discover request, it responds with DHCP offer message. This offer includes an available IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS servers and the lease duration. Multiple DHCP servers on the network might send an offer, but the client or the device will usually choose the first offer it receives. DHCP request is the third step, and here the client replies to the DHCP server with DHCP request message indicating it accepts the offer. This request confirms that the client device intends to use the offer IP address and configuration. And step 4 is DHCP acknowledgement or ACK. And in this step, the DHCP server sends the DHCP ACK message to confirm the IP address assignment and other network details. The client now has the IP address, can configure itself and join the network with full connectivity. And lease renewal. Before the lease expires, the client will automatically send a request to renew its IP address. This ensures that the client retains the same IP as long as it remains on the network. If the client doesn't renew, the IP address will eventually be released and can be assigned to a different device. And releasing IP address. If a device leaves the network, e.g. disconnects, its IP address remains reserved until the lease expires. Once the lease period ends, the IP address is released and returned to the pool of available addresses on DHCP server, making it available for other devices. And here is DHCP lease timing and expiration explained. The lease time set by DHCP server controls how long an IP address is assigned to a device. This helps to avoid IP address exhaustion in dynamic environments like offices where devices frequently connect and disconnect. For example, if a device disconnects from the network, its IP address will be freed up after the lease expires. Lease times are configured on the DHCP server, often ranging from hours to days depending on the network's needs. In some cases you may need to assign a static manual IP address to devices rather than relying on DHCP server and here is how to find the manually configured IP settings on Windows 11. Right click on your start menu and click on settings and in this tab 
on the left hand side clicking network and internet and on this page scroll down and click on advanced network settings and here at the top of the page you will see your internet connections one is wi-fi one is ethernet and depending on which you are using whether you are using a wired connection or ethernet connection you click on first option if you are using a wi-fi option like i am using right now i will be clicking into wi-fi connection and here where it says more adapter options on the right hand side you click on edit and this window will come up and here in this list where it says internet protocol version 4 tcp ip version 4 you click on it and click on button properties and in this window you can see that currently my computer is obtaining IP addresses and DNS server addresses automatically as they are being assigned by DHCP server of my router as DHCP is also built into your home routers but if you would like to assign IP addresses and DNS server addresses manually you can do it by selecting a second option and you can assign IP addresses subnet mask default gateway preferred DNS server or alternative servers here manually but I will leave it to obtain IP address and DNS automatically so the DHCP on my router discovers and assigns IP automatically to this PC by automating IP address assignment, DHCP server ensures efficient network management and prevent address conflicts. This is especially valuable in dynamic environments where devices frequently join and leave the network. And here is the example of DHCP and device connection using protocols and ports. The connection between a device or client and DHCP server involves the use of a user datagram protocol or UDP ports 67 and 68 to facilitate communication. Here is a step by step breakdown of how this process works including the specific roles of UDP ports. Step 1 is DHCP discover where client to server on UDP port 67 when a device such as laptop connects to the network and lacks an IP address it sends out a DHCP discover packet this packet is broadcast to the network on UDP port 67 which is the port that DHCP servers listen to the discover message is sent as a broadcast to the IP address because the client doesn't yet know the IP address of the DHCP server or its own IP address. Next step is DHCP offer server to client on UDP port 68. Upon receiving a discover packet, the DHCP server responds with a DHCP offer packet. This packet includes an available IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS servers and the lease time for the IP address. The server sends the offer to UDP port 68, which is the port where the client listens to for DHCP responses. The client also uses a broadcast address to ensure it receives the offer even though it doesn't yet have a valid IP address. And next step is DHCP request client to server on UDP port 67. After receiving an offer, the client responds with DHCP request packet to confirm acceptance of the provided IP address. The DHCP request is again sent as a broadcast, allowing multiple DHCP servers on the network to recognize which IP address the client has chosen. This message also uses UDP port 67, ensuring that any DHCP DHCP servers that responded to the initial discover can acknowledge the request message. And step 4 DHCP acknowledgement ACK server to client UDP port 68. Finally the DHCP server sends a DHCP ACK acknowledgement packet to confirm the IP address, assignment and other configuration details. This packet is sent to UDP port 68 notifying the client that it can now use the IP address and network settings assigned. At this point the client is fully configured with an IP address and other necessary network settings allowing it to communicate on the network. And here is what happens when a device leaves the network. When the device disconnects, the IP address remains assigned to it for the least duration specified by the DHCP server. If the device doesn't reconnect before the lease expires, the IP address returns to the available pool on DHCP server ready to be reassigned to another device. And here is why UDP protocol is used. Efficiency. 
UDP is a connectionless protocol, meaning that it doesn't establish persistent connection, reducing latency and making it suitable for quick exchanges like DHCP. Port allocation. Port 67, server side and 68, client side are reserved specifically for DHCP, ensuring that clients and servers consistently communicate without interference from other protocols. And to summarize this all up, DHCP relies on UDP port 67 for receiving requests from clients and UDP port 68 for delivering responses back to clients or to devices. This communication system allows efficient IP management, dynamic assigning addresses and configurations to devices, ensuring smooth network operations. Music